Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Kerbals of all ages. Today, I will be going over the three different types, well, well, I would say the three different types of propeller propulsion in this game, kind of ra ranking them. So, a little while back, I meant to make this video a little bit earlier than I'm doing now. been quite delayed with school or not, but, you know, with the with the Breaking Ground DLC, we got propellers and motors and whatnot, and I... I felt this is one of the coolest things that allows us to build kind of proper helicopters where you actually have to deal with torque. Blessing and a curse. But, uh, yes. So, one of the cooler things is they added, you know, typical plane propellers to this. Why is this game taking so long? Alright. But yeah, and you can, you actually can do a lot with them considering you can have them you know, fix pitch, you can uh, do very old pitch styles, you can make a lot of cool things. One of the things I think is probably the biggest feature is they're in relatively incredibly efficient compared to a lot of other forms of propulsion. I saw a post like a couple months ago that's like, you know, up until really this, <laughs> the DLC came out, it's like, how do you escape Eve? You know, you don't. Now it's like, all right, build a quadcopter, <laughs> fly your rocket, your turn rocket up to higher altitude and take off. But yes, we will be starting off with, so the three types we'll be going over today are uh, we have just a standard battery powered electrically, you know, electric motor design. Our big boy batteries. Now, in terms of mods, propulsion uses no mods. Uh, the fuselage on this is an airplanes plus mod, but that, again, it's the same plane for all three, so again, it doesn't really matter. And then I just use tweak scale for the batteries because these batteries gotta be big, big boys. And the reason they're big is just because I, to make it fair and equitable, I made the electrically powered ones the same exact weight, and the ones that carry fuel will carry the same exact amount of fuel just to, because we'll be ranking on range, weight, and uh, kind of just general performance factors. So these two, which are the electrically powered ones, this is the battery, this is the fuel cell one, they both weigh 26 tons. This is our turboprop powered one, which, well, it carries the same amount of, well, liquid fuel. Th this case, it carries liquid fuel and oxidizer. This carries just, you know, the, the volume of the, combined and liquid fuel I think actually it's slightly less but this weighs about 27 and a half tons so those turbine engines are a little bit heavier now they are all rated to be the same power these might be like slightly higher just due to the way you rank it but they all are pretty much at max torque or at roughly max torque of what they'll need so again when it comes to efficiency these engines will be operating at maximum capacity why are these under there we go so yeah, we'll just kind of take off now. <coughs> As you can see, these, uh, all of them, uh, also I forgot to mention is they all will be using the same, uh, same kind of propulsion scheme. And that is they're all going to be powered by you again, you know, rotational force on propellers. And then uh, the propellers are just going to be variable speed, not variable pitch. So, you know, this just controls the RPM limiters, not torque at all. No, oh, this right is here, weird. But yeah. This, uh, let's see if we can get takeoff. So, yeah. Again, they all take off at roughly, again, 7 meters per second. Let's go to this over here. So here, as you can see, with the electric charge, the consumption is quite minimal. Now, I didn't, the calculations weren't exact, but let's just say this plane can fly for quite a while. Because if you look at the, these numbers, they say we even it out about, you know, 500 feet, 500 meters, should I say. Um, consumption's pretty small. Like if you were to say, all right, this consumes, it's roughly, we'll call it uh, 10, it's 22 per second. So if you divide all of that by 22, that's a lot of seconds. This thing can fly for quite a while. So again, you know, pretty good even when, when performing, you know, hard, harsh turns, still very good. Again, yeah, power's maxed, but RPMs are, I assume you're turning RPMs kind of suffer a little bit, but besides that, it's not a huge issue. So yeah make a nice angle we'll come for a landing go on to the next one which will be the combustion powered turbine one 
Now the turbine one, I will spare you the details. It, when testing, it wasn't exactly the best. When I take off, I'll, I'll actually show you a snippet I recorded earlier of me trying to make it to the island runway. Now all these things, I, when I test it, I'll spare you the time of obviously flying it there and back, but they all were able to make it. And again, with very, very insignificant amounts of uh, propellant consumed. Oh, don't need to see that. No, don't, don't, don't need to see that. There we go. So yes, on to the turboprop. The proper turboprop, should I say. This is like technically electric props. But yes, so when it comes to the turboprop power, as you can already probably see, fuel consumption is, uh, considering the amount it has, is kind of... I actually can't really see right now because the cops are off, but... I spool up like it's definitely a, not an insignificant amount so for the electric charge where you had probably a thousand times was quite actually probably 10,000 times what's consuming per second in the stores this thing only has about you know roughly 300 <laughs> so this thing can operate for about five minutes at maximum power and also I didn't really do performance factors the map last one but here, I'll, we'll show at what's at 500 meters, what's max speed. I think the other one was like, until it comes 150. So, yes. so yeah, this one is slightly heavier, heavier. I would say it's, do that's a little more sluggish. Not as good, but uh, here, let's see, what's the max speed on this one? So this thing can't, it's, it's approaching 100 meters per second, but yes. This thing is, in fact, slower. Now, I'm not exactly sure why, because it's spinning at the same power. I mean, again, its power is maxed out, 75 kilo kilo meters, which I believe the, uh, the electric motors would operate at 70. So again, very kind of weird. It's, uh, maybe that's the weight, maybe it's the way the turbines work. Potentially, it could be the drag caused by the air intakes. I have yet to really find out. But again, this one, not as high performing. Wouldn't advise the turbo props. Also, if you're going to be making planes on other planets, this is going to be a big no-no. Even -no. you will not, unless you're flying in on lathe, you will not have much oxygen. Alright, now on to the fuel cell one. Now fuel cell, it operates again very, very similar to the uh, battery powered. Now, the one thing in between the two, like, it's pretty obvious that, you know, the, uh, the combustion, you know, the turbine powered one kind of lost the competition. But when you're really thinking about who wins, between battery and fuel cell, I probably am going to have to give it to fuel cell. Now, performance wise, I mean, getting weight, they're the same. Um, in terms of relative performance, there will be this. Oh, why do these wheels turn? I forgot to turn that off. I think this was the first one I developed before I forgot to turn them off. But yeah, so fuel cell, I say well, I will give it to it just because it is a much smaller package. So if you look at the size of the fuel cells, the batteries were almost about like about one half of uh, the two meter size for relative size. And this thing, it's just uh, where, where even did I put the fuel on? Oh, right there very small amounts of fuel considering what it takes i think that's i think it's like it would be just like 100 something yeah so it'd be roughly equivalent to filling one of these little 2.5s which i think are slightly scaled or something i forget exactly what but much less volume to hold the fuel of the fuel cells and fuel cells themselves for the same amount of weight now again as we if we look at well, electric power it's it's Dave's pretty stable. 
um, in terms of fuel consumption, as you can see, that's a lot lower than our uh, turbine powered. If you combine the two, we're getting at 0 0.5, which is about, it consumes a 15th of fuel per second. And we're going one and a half times as fast for fuel. So yeah, it's pretty obvious. Not to mention again, as I said earlier, these can operate on any planet with an atmosphere. So I would say again, winner of today, fuel cells, or is it? Here is the one that you know I actually swapped to earlier. This thing has infinite range. Here's my magical little, uh, so this is a solar powered uh, big boy. Spray the battery when I took, put big solar panels on it. As you can see, you still got our big batteries. I didn't actually bother to look at weight. I think the, all the panels added like, it was like two tons to it. Come on, there we go. And this actually, I just to show you max performance and kind of overall, uh, this actually uses variable pitch propellers, which variable pitch propellers, well, they're kind of harder to set up, can be, you know, it's something you have to actively manage. You can get much better performance out of them. So that's it's definitely something that I would say is a very good investment. And also solar panels, again, they're very light and you don't really need a lot of them. I think actually, I didn't bother, but like, I think you only need like two of these big ones on each wing to like bridge one of these will power an entire motor. So yeah, let's just uh, get this sucker up to speed. No, 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 no. Yeah, I have it set where like it will go into reverse thrust if it uh, at maximum. Because again, thrust reversing is kind of cool and it's a nice feature to have. So what, uh, just kind of a basic tutorial on variable pitch propellers, I might as well go this in here too. I'll probably actually release this uh, for a separate one. I'll probably maybe split off a little bit, yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> so right now we are at pretty much the pitch that the, you know, the other plane's propellers were at for the most part, I think. And that again will get us to roughly 150 meters per second. But after you've, you know, so print, I would say spooled them up, but you know, pitched them up, if you actually draw them back a little bit, you'll see we get a little boost of speed. And you slowly got, you know, these kind of, you know, finite adjustment. Now these, for the most part, I believe their, their RPMs are actually dropping by a lot. So I would need to give this thing bigger, uh, you don't get as much performance out of this. But as you can see, we are definitely getting more. See if yeah, we can we can push it too. I think at this point, like we we are kind of stalling the engines to a degree, where it's like you know it's dragging them down. If this thing had a lot more power, we would be going a lot faster. I would have to. I'll actually ins insert a little bit at the end of kind of show you what the potential is with a maxed out one of these things. They can go pretty fast though. I remember this is actually was a remake of a previous plane. So this is they. For those who don't know and kind of recognize the name, this aircraft is based off of a Lockheed L-188 Electra, which was a <laughs> kind of late 50s uh, turboprop-driven aircraft. Kind of, well, it was a good design. Kind of fell at the, you know, it was the right, I don't say the right thing, but the it just came at the wrong time, given it was two years before the release of the 707, which really kicked off the jet age. And kind of bad, you're sitting there, you just released a propeller plane at a time when jets were starting to take off. So yeah, but as you can see, yeah, we've definitely, even with the reduced engine power, for same engine power even, at where engine power is maxed, you can do that. Now obviously if we had more powerful engines, it would consume more, but obviously it would go much faster. I think it would still actually be more efficient. My numbers were right before. But again, here. Now we will cut it to high performance aircraft of this type. All right, so here we are with our nice high performance aircraft, much sleeker. Got these nice eight bladed duct fan engines. The ducted fans for compared to the, uh, oh wait, dang. <laughs> compared to the uh, 
propellers are their same, relatively same size. These produce a lot more uh, lift. They produce almost as much lift as the big propellers. And as you can see from the start, this thing is a lot faster. When I decrease the the rate, you'll see it. You'll see it accelerates really, really quickly. Yeah, small nudge. G force is really. It's a nice kick in the pants. Now this thing. It's almost able to go supersonic at pretty much sea level. Now, at higher altitudes, it doesn't actually fly as fast because there's less air up there despite being less drag. So yeah, this thing puts out a lot of a lot of power. As you can see, we are flying just above the ground. But again, this is with variable pitch. So let's see if can we get it. Can we break the sound barrier? I think it's like 343 is roughly sound barrier at sea level. Of course, I don't know what is on Kerbin. Lost it. Lost it. Can it? Yeah. Let's see, can we do it? Can we do it? Let's, let's try going to a dive real quick. Oh, ooh, dang. I forget this thing is like incredibly maneuverable. Oh yeah, so that's what happened. So I didn't mention it earlier on the video, but think of this kind of like gearing systems on uh, like on a man on your car kind of thing. If you are in really you know low gear, you will be able to accelerate very quickly, but you also won't be able to go very fast. In high gear, you'll be able to go faster, but then again, if you're doing it from zero, you aren't going to actually really be able to accelerate because <laughs> you torque and whatnot, but so here. So it's definitely a balancing act because you can stall out very, very quickly. Because mind you, as you kind of saw earlier, you know, the more you pitch the propellers, the more it strains the engines, which means if you are in lower speed, that potentially could over torque them to a degree. I think I actually, if I, if I put this thing flat, I have to flatten out there. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Ooh. Nah. I don't think we can. It's probably just because, like, you know, if anyone knows how the, the drag curves for that are, it is not very close. Oh, yeah. Even with these big engines and the small things, we are very much slamming torque on them. Wow, that just, that just stopped it. That just that just stopped the aircraft in its tracks. Oh, this is. Let's see, can we use this thing? No, we cannot use this thing as a helicopter. <laughs> it's funny. A lot of cases, these things do have positive thrust to weight. Like if actually, if I recall correctly, the uh, the little plane we were flying earlier, the Electra, has positive thrust to weight because these things produce so much darn thrust let's see is this oh wow yeah, so even with all these batteries it's kind of hard to do that's what i mean by earlier it's like if this was a fuel tank filled in with a fuel cell in the tail we would be doing just fine we'd be able to fly this for quite a while let's see if we can put this thing in reverse before we run out of gas oh can we can we can we i don't think we can We can very much control our descent. <laughs> and we are out of power. No. <laughs> no effect whatsoever. Actually, I should keep this thing tight. Oh, and it's... We're, we're unstable. Well, that's all for today. Um, kind of... Please, uh, if anyone's interested in you know, the aerial dogfighting or ground-based combat, please look at my other videos. Remember to hit that like, like, and subscribe button, and uh, you know, have a nice day. Because from the looks of it, Jeb probably is not. Looks like he's probably gonna have a long swim ahead of. Looks like he's yeah, he's gonna have a long swim ahead of him.
yeah. Rip to the jeb. It's gonna be a really long swim. We'll see ya. Thanks for watching.